Hi everyone, Lee Veris here, bringing you tips and techniques in Photoshop and Lightroom for teachers and students. Well, I'm, I'm slowly starting to emerge from my COVID hibernation, and I'm finally ready to get back to the rants. I've really spent the last year and a half or so working on my new online course for Infrared Photography Workflow, a step-by-step -step video course with 14 projects and full-res downloadable work files. To mark the launch of the course, I'm going to do a start to finish edit of an infrared capture for you right now. In fact, this is going to be the, the norm moving forward. I've noticed that most step-by-step post-processing instruction serves to illustrate a single technique uh, meant to achieve a certain effect, like sharpening or black and white conversion, etc. Uh, you hardly ever see a complete edit where the image is actually finished at the end. This is mostly understandable because a complete edit often takes a while. Depending on complexity, it could take a few hours. My courses mostly include simpler, shorter edits at the beginning, progressing to more complex, longer edits in later projects. Today, I'd like to go through a complete edit, starting with the raw file straight out of the camera and ending up with the final step of setting a white point, a black point for the image. My intention here is to give you a sense of my thought processes for a particular edit, and not necessarily an exhaustive exploration of a full range of techniques, but mostly to give you a real-world scenario for a full image edit. Okay, let's get started. All right, so uh, here we are with a... Uh, so this is actually a 590 conversion, but I use an 830 nanometer filter over the 590 uh, to give me just infrared, pure infrared, uh, no visible light. And whenever I'm uh, shooting in that situation, I use the, uh, the um, in-camera, I use Fujifilm's film simulation of Acros G. That's the green, uh, the green filter uh, over the black and white. And uh, because we have a monochromatic capture and infrared has no color, it's invisible. Um, there's really no point in trying to create color with this scene. Um, so, um, typical IR scene, very low contrast. Let's see what we can do here. Now, with a, with a normal capture, when you see something like this, it's extra soft. We might be inclined to just start adding contrast, uh, starting from where we are. Um, we're all zeroed out here. It's just a matter of, of adding, you know, using the contrast slider, you know, maybe using clarity. For infrared, I found that uh, we take a slightly counterintuitive approach. So uh, I'm going to actually initially make it even softer, less contrast. I'm going to reduce the highlights, which darkens the sky up here. I'm going to open up the shadows, which opens up the darker rocks. I'm going to open up the blacks all the way. And now it's really gray. Uh, I'll reserve this white slider for later. But now we're going to start putting the contrast back using these presence sliders. So uh, typically I'll just crank the clarity up all the way. And because we have a lot of texture in the rocks and, and, and these are, this is seaweed, by the way, in infrared, it's like glowing white. Uh, because it's reflecting a lot of infrared. Um, so for that, those little fine details, we'll use the texture slider to put some extra crispness in those edges. And now I'll use the dehaze slider to kind of put the black back. Um, but the dehaze is very interesting. It's, it's, it's kind of like clarity, uh, but it's extra aggressive at deepening, uh, adding darker contrast. And... In this situation, since we've opened up the blacks and the shadows quite a bit, um, the kind of contrast it puts back, it's, it first adds a black point in the deepest shadow and, and adds detail in the lighter areas a bit faster than the, the darker areas. So uh, we can avoid sort of plugging up the shadow detail. And we just kind of see how far I can go with this. And I'm starting to get to the point where I'm going to lose some shadow detail in here if I go much further, so I stop. And now, looking at this image, I can see we basically, the foreground area is in the shade. You can see a little highlight kissing this area. 
but all of this area is in the shade, so it's the only illuminations from the open skylight. The sky is well illuminated, has a lot of detail in it, but I want to kind of access the sky separately. I don't want to uh, darken this area anymore. I want to lighten this area, and I don't want to lighten the sky any more than it is. So suggests I'm going to have to do something different to the sky than I do with the foreground. So that suggests that we go into the mask panel. Uh, and sure enough, we have a select sky. Uh, this is one of the newer Lightroom mask tools. So I'm going to go ahead and select the sky. We'll see what it uh, what it does here. I'm going to go ahead and put this show overlay in there so you can kind of see. It's more or less selected the sky. It's done a pretty good job. There may be a little bit of bleed over into the rocks here, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and now adjust this. And probably what I'm going to do just is just add a little, a little more clarity, which will bring out maybe a little dehaze will darken some aspects of it. Okay. So that's kind of getting about where I want it. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want to get that too black up in there, but well, that's pretty good. Um, and I just had an idea, since this area is starting to go dark, I'm going to subtract some of that off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and click and subtract using a brush. And uh, I'm going to put my flow down here about 50 or so uh, well maybe we'll do 40 uh, and I'm going to put my feather all the way up so it's the softest brush I can get and I'm just gonna brush across this a couple of times to try and take out some of that deepening effect. And then that way I can make the sky darker, which will make this area darker as well. So just kind of erasing most of the adjustment off of that. Not entirely. Um, and now let's see if I can uh, add a little more dehaze here. Yeah, that's getting nice and dramatic. And it's adding these sort of dark areas. It's, it's, it's it's helping this area. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to add another, I'm going to add a linear gradient, sort of a general mask. And unfortunately we can't really invert. I can't create a new sky mask and then invert it. There's, there's no command for invert. Uh, so I can't use this mask to select the foreground area. Instead, I have to go ahead and manually select that. So I'm going to click on create a new mask. And we'll use a linear gradient, and I'm just going to paint it uh, starting from about here. Let's see. I'm just going to drag that up. And I want to keep the gradient more or less in line with this mountain here. Let's show the overlay. So I may have to erase some of this back in this area. Um, in fact, why don't I go ahead and do that? I'm going to now I have the subtract button I can subtract a brush here and we'll just subtract this area out of the sky so I put my flow up all the way and uh, we'll just remove this part of the the mask here so I'm not affecting the sky I can go into the edge of the the mountain here I don't want to affect the sky at all I just want to affect this foreground area Okay, so um, let's get that white in there. So I'm going to crank this white slider, and that opens up these these highlights nicely. Uh, so now they're they now they really look like infrared seaweed. They're they're really glowing white. And now I'm looking at this and trying to decide how do I want the eye to move here. I, I'm I'm pretty happy with the way this looks in general. I've got some nice little highlights up here. I'm thinking that I'd kind of like, you know, um, I kind of like uh, this area up in here to, to ping those little highlights and maybe bring the highlights down in here. And uh, I'm kind of thinking I'd like the eye to kind of curl around. So I'm looking at leading the eye with maybe a little bit of highlight um, emphasis. 
So I'm going to brush in some more uh, highlights here, basically. I, this area, I want that to pop a little bit and lead your eye down into this area. Um, so um, let's create a new mask. This time we're going to use a brush. And um, I'll start by just sort of brushing in solidly an area that I know I want to be brighter. So uh, I'm going to going to take this area here and let's show the overlay just so you can see uh, that's the area I just brushed in and I'm going to take the whites up in that area just take the white slider up as far as I well it looks like I can go all the way with it here let me just zoom in so that we can kind of see what's happening with that area. Maybe it take it up a little bit with the exposure as well. Now see that's 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 clipping there. So um maybe I'll bring the, the whites down just a hair. So I want to brighten that area but I don't want to clip any of the of the whites. So bring that down. Maybe this is up to a little too high now. So when I'm looking to create this sort of highlight effect, I'll brush it on at 100% in one area here and, and then just adjust the, uh, the sliders to do what the, the maximum amount that I want. Now I'll pull this flow down. You know, sometimes I go 50 or less so that I can kind of tease in these highlights and I don't have to necessarily brush them in at 100%. Now this area up in here, I want to bring that part of the rock highlight, make that a little brighter. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush a couple times over this area. I may have to do another brush stroke because over here, it's easy to get these uh, seaweed to be brighter. And whenever you use, you know, uh, some flow less than 100, it the brush strokes kind of take a while to come in. You have to sort of do this very slowly. So uh, I'm going to speed up the video here to brush, put my other brush strokes in. So I'm trying to do this um, in in sort of a logical way to make it look like the the, the light is is coming from just behind here. So I want it to the angle of the light to kind of cross hit across these um, seaweed in a in a way that sort of makes sense. It's not really accurate, but um, I want to climb up this this rock face. So I, may, I think I may want to brighten this up even more, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And let's bring these in here too. All right, let's close that mask panel and kind of evaluate this. I think the other thing I might want to do is, is put a little bit of a vignette, just a slight one. So I go down to the effects down here and just put a little bit of edge darkening there just to kind of increase the drama. And uh, I'm pretty good here. The, the last thing I do with any kind of black and white image is I'll put in a, uh, uh, a color grading to create a split tone effect. So, um, this is what I'll do. I'm going to put the blending up at 100% so we get. I can really judge how the color is going to interact. So I'm going to work the shadows and the highlights here. And my shadows, I want to go towards a sort of a reddish color. So uh, I'm pulling this little bubble away from the center. I'll go for a, a kind of a purpley uh, tone, which is sort of like selenium. 
Uh, and then my highlights, I'm going to go in the sort of the opposite direction. I'm going to make them a little more, uh, well, make this them more blue. So um, very often what I'll do is I'll try and orient the colors so that they're, they're kind of opposite each other down here. So you see that? And uh, we may increase the the color tone just so you can see it that's maybe a little rich and let's put this highlight in there okay so now i have i definitely have a split tone kind of effect and if i if it seems too strong now you can just pull back the blending um, so we, a lot of times with this uh split tone effect less is more uh and uh i think i'm i'm liking that now so at this point, I'm pretty much done. However, um, the one thing I really can't do effectively in Lightroom is actually set a, a white point and a black point. Because the numbers here, if we try and look around at the, these various highlights and things, the numbers go from 0 to 100. They don't really relate to actual RGB workspace numbers. They're, uh, they're percentages in, in Lightroom's kind of internal color space, which is uh, really kind of a linear um, pro photo color space. I'm going to zoom in on this area just because now I'm looking at it. It looks like it might be yeah, well, just slightly. Yeah, it's okay. I think I'll leave it like that. I may want to. No, I think I'm going to leave everything like this. I'm, I'm pretty much done here. But because I can't really set a white point and a black point in Lightroom, I'm going to have to go into Photoshop to do that. All right, so let's go into Photoshop. We'll do Photo Edit In, and uh, we'll open as a smart object in Photoshop. Okay, and here we are in Photoshop. So in order to set a, a black point and a white point, you have to find the lightest point in the image and the darkest point in the image and I mean, we could guess we could think you know maybe somewhere over in here is the darkest point uh, and maybe somewhere over here is the lightest point hard to say um, so I, this is the method I use to identify what the lightest point and the darkest point is and I'll make a threshold adjustment layer so I click on this little icon here and now we have um, We've turned the image into black and white, and where it breaks from black to white is where this slider is. So we start with it right in the middle. Uh, in order to find the, the very darkest thing in the image, I'm going to move the slider over to the left here, and uh, we'll look for, let me zoom in just a little, we'll look for an, a, a dark area, a dark crevice. And it looks like we've got, we've got something coming up right in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a uh, the color sampler tool, you know, the color sampler tool here. And I'm going to click right into that area. We'll zoom right in because I want to make sure that this, this point is right in that darkest area. I'm going to use 5x5 five five average for my sample size. Uh, and let's zoom back out now. And now I will double click on that threshold adjustment and let's find the lightest thing. So, you know, we found the darkest area. Now we're going to move into the lightest area. And it, what we're looking for is the lightest significant area, uh, which looks like it's going to be a highlight on the, um, the seaweed here. So again, I'll go ahead and get my color sampler tool, place a little highlight right there. And... We'll zoom out and I'll throw this channel of this threshold adjustment away. So now we're back to our normal uh, tones and we look over and we see our, our black point and our white point. So our white points already up there. It's clipped to 255. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm OK with that area being paper white. Um, I, I don't want to suppress the whites in this image. Uh, however, I do want to get my black point to be neutral. And it's we've already done a, 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 a color grading here to create this split tone effect. 
So my shadows are not neutral anymore. I'm going to try to neutralize those because that will make that point look deeper, even though it isn't. So I want to I want to neutralize my shadow point. I'm going to set these values to 10, 10, 10. So right now we see red is at 13, green is at 8, and blue is at 10. So let's put a curve adjustment on here. So I'm going to get the curve. And I'm just looking at these numbers. I'm going to ignore the whites because they're already clipped. Um, blue is OK where it is. So I'm going to go to the green channel. And we want that green to be up to 10. So I'm just raising this endpoint here. Once you've highlighted that endpoint, you can use uh, the up arrows. So we're going to slide this point in the green channel up to make that hit 10. OK, so that was just like two nudges up. And our red channel, we want to move this to the right because we want that to be a little bit darker. Right now it's at 13. We're going to nudge it to the right until we get it to 10. And that's it. Now we are we're, we've got a neutral uh, black point so that it's all 10, 10, 10, and what our white point clipped, it's neutral, 255, 255, 255. So that's setting the white point and the black point, um, and now we're really done. I, it looks like it's it's taken a little bit of the color out because I've neutralized that, that black so much. Um, let's go back here and let's see, I've... I have brought the red down. Uh, so I'm going to make a point on the curve right here near that black point, that end point. And I'm going to just bump up my lower red values just a little bit to put some of the color back in. So I just put a little point in there and nudged it up. Uh, and now I'm going to close this curve adjustment and look at it, see what it's doing to the color. Yeah, it's I've I've made the color just a little bit redder. I think I like that better. So we're done. All right, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. <laughs> you might be interested in more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video, and please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You might consider following me on, on Instagram. I have two books in print available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school under the Education menu at Veris.com. My latest Photoshop course is Infrared Photography Workflow, where I go into great detail on infrared photography post-processing, custom IR profiles for Lightroom and Camera Raw, black and white and color infrared, and many advanced Lightroom and Photoshop techniques. I put a special 30% discount link in the description below. Check it out. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.